Essentially, it's a theory that describes how electrons behave. Atoms consist of a nucleus, which is positively charged and has most of the mass in it. And then it has these electrons buzzing around. And the ele it's the, really the motion of the electrons and their behavior that determines all of the, what we call the chemical properties of the atom, how it reacts with other atoms, how, which molecules forms, what color the material is, how it tastes. Um, even the conductance, if you, uh, all these properties are determined really by what the electrons are doing. And this model is a very nice one with the electrons buzzing around the nucleus, but it's, you know, and going in certain orbits. Um, but actually, to rigorously know what the electrons are doing, we need quantum mechanics. And the equation that the electrons satisfied, like what's determining where they are at any point in time and space, is, is, was discovered in the 1920s by Schrodinger, Schrodinger's equation. So we know exactly what the electrons are supposed to be doing, but the problem is this equation is impossible to solve for more than a few electrons because each electron interacts, not just, as, not just attracts to the nucleus, but it also interacts with all the other electrons. So as you add more electrons to the system, and so the larger the system you have, the, the, expon the problem to solve becomes exponentially difficult on the computer. Um, so, and, you know, the systems we're interested in for, you know, chemical interest or biomolecular interest have hundreds, thousands of electrons. What time-dependent, or actually density functional theory does, without the time-dependent part in front, is it was proven rigorously in, in 1964 that actually all properties of this interacting system, where all the electrons are interacting with each other and attracted to the nucleus, can be obtained by simply looking at the electron density. Now, what's the electron density? It's the probability of finding any one of those electrons somewhere in space. So this gr greatly simplifies the problem because it means that you can look at an, a non-interacting system, a different system, where, which has exactly the same electron density, but from this fictitious system, you can extract all properties of the true system. So that means you can now, you know, we don't, we don't have this exponential scaling problem anymore because now the, in this fictitious system, the electrons don't interact, right? They're just, they, they're, they're sitting there, they're attracted to something that's holding them together, but they don't interact with each other. So then we can really solve quantum mechanically um, systems of hundreds and thousands of electrons. And this is what density functional theory is about. The time dependent part comes in because uh, about, I guess, uh, 20 years later, it was proven that not just for an atom sitting there statically, but uh, that we can do this mapping, but also for when you turn an electric field on or a magnetic field on or light, you shine light on the sample, then also all properties of this interacting complicated system is contained from just looking at the time evolving density, the probability of finding any one electron. And so that's, that's what the theory is about. I tend to, again, you know, reduce the system to the simplest so that we can do something exact with it quantum mechanically and then find its, find its DFT analog or TDDFT analog and, find, and sort of map out the parts so that we can find what these, the, in this new picture, what these objects look like. The field itself has impacted, um, you know, uh, from solid state physics, nanoscience, so the structure of um, uh, devices are getting smaller and smaller, and so these quantum effects are getting more important. When, um, and so this is one, one people are using density functional theory, time-dependent density functional theory, to model these effects, um, uh, model these devices. So nanoscience on the one hand, and then we have, on the other hand, um, strong field physics. On the other hand, we have also um, biological uh, effects, biochromophores, or um, uh, so biochromophores are biological molecules which absorb in the visible or on the near UV. And this is very important in vision, in understanding vision, understanding photosynthesis, understanding good candidates for solar cells. And so and there's a lot of um, research now on, on, on using time-dependent DFT to, to figure out what, how, this, how these molecules work. Mm -hmm.